Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and collision events in Unreal 4. Now, before we can talk about the collision events specifically, we need to create two Niagara emitters. So I'm going to right click, go to Effects, Niagara Emitter, and the first one that I'm going to create is from the Fountain template. And then I'm going to give it a name, NE, whatever you want. And then I'm going to open this up so I can make a few adjustments. So the first adjustment I want to make is in spawn rate. Instead of 90, I want to spawn about three. This way we only have a few particles. And then I'm going to come down to initialize particle. And then under lifetime, I'm going to change the min to five and the max to seven. And then under sprite size mode, I'm going to change the min to 20 and the max to 24. Now, the last thing I want to add is in particle update, and that's going to be our collision. Once we add that, probably going to get this error. We want to move collision above solve forces and velocity. And now this is all set up. So I'm going to save it and then we'll close out of this. And right away, we're going to right click and we're going to create a Niagara system. And we'll name it correctly, NS, for good naming conventions. And then we just want to pull this out into the world so that we can test and make sure that the collision is working correctly. So I'll pull this out here, and it looks like it's working just fine. Now we need to go and make our other emitter. So we have an emitter for a collision. Now we need an emitter to spawn off of that collision. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to effects, and I'm going to create this Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And I'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want, as long as it's not the same name as the other one. And then I'll open that up. Now this emitter is going to be pretty simple, but the first thing we want to do is add a spawn burst to emitter update. And we won't be using this in the end, but this will help us visualize our emitter. So I'm going to set the spawn count to one, and then under initialize particle, I'll leave the lifetime as it is, but the sprite size mode, I'm going to change that to uniform. And then I'm going to set this uniform sprite size to 15. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to come to particle update and I'm going to add a scale sprite size. And under scale factor, I'm going to change this to a float. This way we're just changing it uniformly. And then this float, I'm going to change to a curve so that we can animate the size of the sprite to get smaller as it dies. So for the first key, I'm going to leave this, I'm going to set this to 1.5 and then I'll leave the other key at zero. And we should see a sprite just getting smaller over time. Perfect. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a scale color. And basically what I want to do here is I want to change the color over time, but then I also want to change the intensity of the color over time. So in the scale mode, I'm going to change this to RGBA together, and then I'm going to convert this into a linear color. And now I want to turn this into a multiply so that I can multiply a color against the float. So I'm going to change this to a multiply, and then the scale factor, I'm going to change this to a float. And now both of these, I'm going to turn into curves so that I can change them over time. So this float, turn this into a curve. And then the linear color, I'll turn this into a curve. Now for the intensity, I'm going to set the first key to 60. And we should see that this is really bright at first. And then as it gets smaller, it gets dimmer. And now for the color, for this first key, I'm going to set it to something red, orange. And then the second key, I'm going to change this to a purple. And then for the last key, I'm going to change this to something that's blue. And then we also have our alpha over time. So it's fading out as well. And we could probably pull this in just a little bit. Let's take a look. Perfect. All right, so now we need to go and look at our Niagara system because that's the best place to take care of our collision events. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to open up my Niagara system 
and I'm going to add our second emitter to the track here. So now we have both of our emitters in here. And we can see that they're both working. So first things first, for collision events, we need to have something that sends collision events, and we need to have something that receives collision events. So in particle update, on the emitter that you want to send collision events, we want to click on the plus icon, and we're going to search for collision. And under events, you should see generate collision event. Now, once you do that, you're probably going to get this error. And if you click around, you may not get a lot of information on this. But if you come to your Niagara log, you should see requires persistent ID. Now, when particles spawn, they usually spawn in an order and they're assigned a number. But by default, after particles die, whatever number they had, they pass that number off to the previous particle. So for events like this, we need to come up to emitter properties and we need to turn on requires persistent ID. This way that number won't be passed off. Now the second thing to note here, GPU emitters do not work with collision events. So it needs to be a CPU. Now coming back to our collision event, the two things I know here are the event condition and the velocity threshold. The event condition is basically just saying, is this event on? And then the velocity threshold, this is just saying on collision impact was the velocity at least this or more, because if it's less than this, it's not going to generate a collision event. All right, so now we have an emitter that's generating collision events and in a way sending events. Now we need to look at our other emitter and we need to find a way to receive the events. So the way that we start that is by coming to add event handler and we click on this plus icon. And as soon as we do that, we get this event handler properties. And this handler is basically just getting information for what to do with the particles on this emitter. So the first thing we have is source. And we click on this, you should see collision event for your other emitter. We wanna select that. That way we have a relationship with it. Next, we have execution mode. And if you click on the drop down, we have every particle and spawn particles. In this case, for collision events, we want spawned particles. Max events per frame. This is kind of a way of optimizing or limiting. If you set this to zero, it's going to be infinite. And then our spawn number, this is how many particles do you want to spawn? So because of this, our spawn burst instantaneous, it's kind of redundant. So I'm going to turn off the spawn burst instantaneous, and then I'm going to set the spawn number to one. I don't want to spawn a bunch of them, but we'll spawn at least one per hit. So I'm going to save that. And then let's go take a look at what we have. So I'm going to drag our Niagara system out into the world. You see they're hitting and we're spawning something. You can see it's kind of going through the ground, but it's not spawning where each one of these particles hit. They're always spawning right here in the center of the emitter. And there's a reason for that. So right now, we're generating collision events and we're sending them, but this event handler, this isn't actually receiving them. It's just handling how to spawn the particles, not where. So under event handler, if we click on the plus icon, we wanna search for receive, and you should see receive collision event. And then once we add that, we can save, let it compile, and then let's go take a look again. And now, you can see that they're actually spawning where the particles hit. So I'll just raise this up a little bit. We can see them spawn some other areas. Hit G on the keyboard. And that's it. Now, if you wanted to go and add some other things to this or change it, you can absolutely do that. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.